you are in Medina and the year is 11 after Hijra and our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Ali, he's just passed away and the event of Saqifa has just occurred. I want to know if you were in that situation where the Shia of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam are being forced to pledge allegiance, would you give bay'ah under taqiyya and help the Ahl al-Bayt alayhi salam in secret? Or would you speak up, risking your life and the lives of your loved ones as well? Or would you do something else? Um, I think I will uh, speak up, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, whatever happens, happens. Truth be told, uh, um, like, uh, Khilafat was uh, Imam Ali's right. And uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu did say that. So there is the reason why he went through all that effort in Ghadir. Um, it wasn't for nothing. He wanted people to remember that and accept that um, Imam Ali is Khalifa. So there is, uh, even if it, if I, I think if it was me, um, I would definitely speak up. I would definitely say, like, make people remember that day and tell them, remember what, what Prophet Muhammad Wasallam said, we're taking our deen from him, so why not listen to him? Yes, exactly. At the end of the day, the haq, the truth, is the most important thing in our deen and what an honour it would be to stand up for the truth and speak up against injustice. Um, now, sister, I want you to picture that you are now outside the house of Fatima Sahra alayhi salam. Now, this is the house that our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ali he used to go there every day and greet his Ahl al-Bayt with so much love and affection. He would kiss the hands of Lady Fatima and he would hug and hold Al-Hasan wal Hussein alayhim salam. He used to treat that house with so much respect. I want you to imagine that you are standing outside and you see the enemies come towards the house and you hear that the threat is made and that Fatima to Sahra alayhi salam refuses their entry. I want you to imagine that you see the men break the door down and you hear the screams of Fatima to Sahra alayhi salam from behind the door. I want you to imagine that now they are setting the house on fire how would you feel seeing such a thing? How would you respond? What would you do? Again, I think I would speak up. I know at that time and like even now, it's difficult for women to speak up and raise their voice. But I would definitely go to the men in my family maybe, tell them, go defend them, Imam Ali. Um, I myself would probably go and like speak to them, try to put sense into like those men and say, what you're doing is wrong. This is not just anybody's house, it's Prophet's daughter. And she's behind the door. She's, if she's saying, don't come to my home, you cannot go in there. Um, yeah, I'll definitely <laughs> say that, mm -hmm. definitely, but yeah. Yeah. It's, um, you're right about what you say with um, it's very difficult even in our modern age for women to speak up and one of the most beautiful things about Fatima to Sahra alayhi salam she shows us that we shouldn't be afraid to speak up as she proved when she gave her sermon of Fadqiyya um, and now I want you to picture that the attack has finished and now you you're walking you've walked inside the house of Lady Fatima alayhi salam and you find her lying on the ground unconscious and around her her children Al Hassan Wal Hussein 
Zainab and Umm Kulthum, they're crying and they're trying to wake their mother up. What would you do to comfort them? What would you do to help make this situation easier, if you could? I'd help. Um, <clears throat> I'd help Fat um, be Fatma Zahra. Salam alaikum. I'd help her uh, with her injuries. I'd calm down the kids. Mom Hassan, Mom Hussein. We say this, say the Zainab. I'm Kulsum. I'd calm them down, I'd just be nice to them, that everything will be fine probably. And um, make them remember that at the end of the day, they're the ones who are right. Yeah. yeah, of course. Finally, sister, I want you to imagine that again, you're in the city of Medina and this time you are walking with Imam al-Zaman. May Allah hasten his reappearance on the earth. I want you to imagine that you're walking with him and you're talking and you say to him, Yabn Rasulullah, where are you taking me? And I want you to imagine that he replies, I'm taking you to the grave of my grandmother Fatima to Zahra alayha salam. Of course, no one knows where Lady Fatima alayha salam was buried. She was buried at night with only a few witnesses because of the oppression that was done to her. I want you to imagine that you are seeing her grave for the first time. You're standing in front of her. What would you say to her if you could say anything you wanted to. I say salam first and I'll pay my respects and say salam and <clears throat> probably try and do a ziyarat on behalf of myself and my parents the same way that you when you visit Karbala or any other uh, ziyarats you do your salam and uh, I'll, I'll probably apologize not being the person that he, she probably wanted her, um, her father's ummah to be. And I'll probably promise her that I'll be a better person. And I'm thankful that I know where she likes. Yeah. And I'll probably ask him on Mahdi Salam, thank him for coming back and for showing me where her, his mother's grave is. And <laughs> as a woman, I'll probably cry a lot, remembering her pain, definitely. I'll, I'll definitely say, pay my condolences about, for Imam Hussein and I saw that. And that may she guide us to be Kani Zahra for the rest of my life. Inshallah. 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 One day. Inshallah. Um, thank you so much for having this interview with me, sister. Um, your views and your passion for Lady Zahra salam, is a very beautiful thing to see. I pray earnestly that Our Lady alayha salam, is pleased with you and I pray may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us steadfast, steadfast and firm on the path of the Ahlul Bayt alayhim as -salam. and may he hasten the reappearance of Sahib al-Zaman and may he bring goodness and justice back to this world. I 
خدا کنم تو نور غیر نواییم خدا کنم 